This is going to be a good one. Let's talk about what actually are COVID symptoms. Remember in the beginning, we thought it was fever, cough, and body aches, but we've learned since then that COVID symptoms can include a lot of other things, like loss of sense of smell or taste. Some people have abdominal issues like pain, vomiting, diet. So, so what are the numbers now about, of all the people that have tested positive for coronavirus, when we look back and study that, what percent of them have what symptoms? This, this data that I want to review with you comes from the CDC where they looked at over a million, 1.3 million Americans that had COVID. And they went back and they looked at what were their symptoms. It's really interesting data, right? So let's review this. I'm going to include this link for you. About 50% had cough. Similar number had fever, a little bit less, 43%. So most did have cough and fever. That was right. We initially were, were told in March and April. Body aches, 36%. Headache, 34%. So about a third had body aches and headache. And so it really does seem like a cough, fever, body ache, headache. That's a flu-like syndrome, right? 28% um, have shortness of breath. That one's a little bit different. Flu people usually don't have shortness of breath. 20% have, I'm reading it off the computer. 20% have sore throat. 19%, and then we get into the abdominal pain stuff. 19% have diarrhea, 11% have nausea, vomiting, 7% have abdominal pain. So less, like 10 or 20% have abdominal symptoms. One in 10, one in 20, one, one in 10, one in five. Um, seven, uh, 8% have that loss of smell and taste, which it's not very common, only 8%, but when they do have it, like when they have fever and cough and body aches, and they're like, and I can't taste or smell anymore. I'm like, you've got COVID. Like for sure, you've got COVID. Even though it's even though that's not everybody that has it, when they do have it, I feel like it's it is more likely that they do have COVID. Six percent have runny nose, so not very common. A cold is runny nose, so not really cold like symptoms. Only six percent. So Let's talk about this for a minute because a lot of people wonder, are the symptoms that I'm having now, could that be COVID? And the answer is, if you have any of this stuff, cough, fever, body aches, headache, abdominal stuff, loss of smell, like any, any of those kind of symptoms, and really the truth is, maybe, maybe you do have it. Things that make it more likely, are you in an area where there's an outbreak? where there is a lot of COVID going around. You know, in, in August, for example, that would be like Florida, California, especially Los Angeles, Arizona, less likely somewhere like New York, right? Which has already gone through a wave and now it's gone down. So there's still people in New York that are having these symptoms. It's just less likely to be New York, less likely to be COVID. So part of the answer to could my symptom be COVID is, are you, what's your risk of exposure? Are you in an area that there's a lot of COVID going around? Are you out and about? Are you an essential worker? Are you a healthcare worker? Are you somebody who potentially is exposed to this? Or have you been like quarantined for a month or two and the only thing you're doing is opening packages from Amazon and Uber Eats, you know, in which case it's a lot less likely that your headache or that your abdominal pain could be COVID. And remember, People are still getting migraines. Like I see people that come in with headaches that aren't COVID. You know, I've had gastroenteritis patients that just come in and it's not COVID. But there's still those viruses running around. People still get appendicitis. Everything isn't COVID, even though I'm biased because I, I talk about this stuff all the time. Um, how can you figure out if your symptoms, you know, are COVID or not? The best answer to this question, to get the best answer of is what you have COVID or not, is number one, see a doctor who has experience in this, who knows what they're doing, who's diagnosed COVID in a significant amount of patients, and the combination of that, a good doctor, with them having access to a COVID test. Now, a doctor ought to be able to, in most circumstances, still, maybe not most, in many circumstances, still diagnose COVID 
without a test, okay? Uh, it's challenging, but a good doctor ought to be able to do that, just like we ought to be able to diagnose colds and strep and whatever without the test. It's a clinical diagnosis. That's a good doctor. But that plus the test, that's the best, without a doubt. If you don't have that, what can you do? Well, I think the, the second thing I would say, the best way of figuring this out, is one of these virtual visits where you FaceTime a doctor that knows what they're, that has experience in this, that knows what they're talking about, and they can see you a little bit. I think that gives you a little more information. Number three would be call and advice helpline. Again, so that there's a human being that has experience and that can kind of tease you out and walk through things like, oh goodness, you're having shortness of breath. Are you a smoker? Do you have asthma or emphysema? Do you have other things, part of your medical history, that normally give you shortness of breath? Or on the other hand, are you somebody who normally doesn't have any of that and you went to a concert, to a protest, to a whatever, something that where you had an exposure and now you've got that, well, that could be COVID. But my point is somebody who can help you sort out if your symptom is or isn't COVID. Now notice some of the things that I'm not recommending. Google, <laughs> right? I have hesitation about people just getting tests on their own, this direct to consumer thing without seeing somebody that can help them make sense of the test. People still have serious stuff. You know, there's still migraines that aren't gonna get better without legit medicine. There's brain tumors that Headaches, you think it's COVID, you take a COVID test, maybe you're positive, what are you, we're going to miss. Like, I'm still a proponent, and I'm biased as an ER doctor, um, that seeing somebody in person, again, with experience and access to the appropriate technology, which is testing, is the best way to go. Um, you know, and don't forget, like, this is a crazy thing about this disease. Like we thought in the beginning, oh, it's just, you know, fever, cough, and body aches. And now we see all these other symptoms. And it's just a reminder of some of the basics of medicine, which is people are different. They're very different. It's a wonderful thing about life. It's one of the things I love about ER is that disease looks different. It manifests different. In everybody, it's really cool, but it really makes it really challenging also to figure out, okay, this person has COVID and their symptom was headache. This person has COVID and it was abdominal pain, vomiting and diarrhea. This person had COVID and it was cough, shortness of breath and fever. They all had the same underlying virus that caused three different three very different manifestations of disease. Again, most people have fever, cough, and uh, body aches, but everybody's different, and the disease can manifest in very different ways, which makes it uh, challenging uh, to diagnose. What else did I want to tell you about this? Can you have COVID but test negative? Absolutely. The PCR test, which is the swab that they, they call it a brain biopsy, they shove that thing and it's uncomfortable. I've had a couple that are awful. <laughs> It's the best, fastest test we've got. It is what it is. Um, that test is what we call 70% sensitive, which means of the people, let's say you have 100 people who actually have coronavirus. This test is going to show or is going to be positive for 70% of them, 70 of them, and 30 of them are going to test negative, which would be a false negative. So they would test negative but actually have COVID. That's not a great test. Um, that negative is a big problem, which is why I recommend you see a doctor that knows what they're talking about. It's hard to figure it out in the beginning, but once we see enough patients, like at this point, if I have somebody that comes to me and they've got an exposure and they've got classic symptoms of fever, cough, body aches, and I'm thinking COVID, it doesn't matter what the test says. We're going to treat them as if it's positive, which for most people means they can go home and take care of themselves. You know, I recommend, what do you do? Stay hydrated. Eat a regular healthy diet. Get plenty of sleep. Get rest. Don't overdo it. Manage your stress. If you want to take vitamins and supplements, take vitamin C, D, and zinc. I don't think they do much, but knock yourself out. Um, I don't recommend hydroxychloroquine at this point. 
pending other uh, evidence. There isn't, there aren't really other, there isn't evidence that there's other things that help. So my point is, even if the test is negative, this is what, uh, you know, isolate as if you do have it, take care of yourself and let this thing get better. With most people, they do fine and it goes away like a viral illness. Um, some folks do have, you know, there are some folks that get sick, need to go to the hospital. Some people do have, this is kind of interesting stuff, um, symptoms of COVID that even though the virus is out of your system, okay, it's gone, right? Your body has uh, defeated the virus. It's killed. It's not, the virus is not replicating. It's no longer damaging your lungs or anything, but you can have persistent symptoms like headache or fatigue or cough that even though the virus is gone, these symptoms linger for weeks, like a month or two, a couple months, three months. Some people have had these things for a while. You test them again, and they were positive before, they're negative now. The virus is gone, but they still have these symptoms. It's like a post-COVID syndrome. That can still be a thing. So anyway, there you go. That's my recommendation here, just to review those symptoms of percentages and what to do, you know, is your symptom of X COVID? Well, the best thing to do is to see a doctor, that, see a good doctor with experience who had access to the test. Hope that's helpful. See you next time. As always, stay safe and do your part. We're going to get through this.